What's up guys, Nintendo here once again, and I've got a video response. I haven't done one of those in a while. I actually got tagged in a video recently for your top five most nostalgic games, and I was tagged by Church, the Game Grinder. If you haven't checked out the Game Grinder's channel, really good guy. Uh, he's a metalhead, so that kicks ass. And he likes all kinds of games. He does reviews, he does a lot of pickup videos, and he's just an entertaining guy. So go check out Church's channel. He is known as the Game Grinder. I will put link in description below. So anyways, uh, you know it's not that easy to figure out the top five most nostalgic games. I had to really think about games that like put me in a different place or when I think about them I think about them from the perspective of when I like played them as a kid. So, uh, But there were five. There were definitely five. In fact there were more than five but uh, yeah sticking with the theme I went with five. And the first one I've got for you, I don't know why I had it in the case, but um, first one is one that just means a lot to me. This game means so much to me. Metroid 2 on Game Boy. Um, my parents bought me a Game Boy brand new. I got it for Christmas one year. And uh, very soon after that, we took a vacation and I had only a few games. I think I had like Metroid 2. Mario Land, Tetris, and uh, I think it might have had Turtles too also. But anyways, we went to Nevada, or actually Lake Tahoe, and we went to the Nevada side. And we rented this cabin, and it was really cool. And the drive over there, I just remember playing nothing but Metroid 2. It's like I had these other games, and I did play Mario Land a lot, but man, I didn't play it nearly as much as Metroid 2, and I wanted to beat the game so bad. I think it was like 11, maybe 12, but... Um, yeah, the whole time in the back of the car, it, it reminds me of that, if you guys have ever seen that little picture of the kid like playing the Game Boy at night with the lights buzzing by and it says something like, if you've never experienced this, you don't, you didn't have a good childhood, like, that was my childhood, exactly, it was like the driving and like the Game Boy and yeah, it was, it was just a really cool time and that area is so freaking beautiful, there was snow everywhere and I remember we got to, um... I think we stayed at a motel first somewhere, and then we ended up going to the cabin. Like, the first night on the way, we ended up staying at this motel, and that's when I beat Metroid 2. And I was just so stoked. Uh, the boss, gigantic, huge queen at the end, I was, like, so stoked because the Metroids just get bigger and bigger in the game. The music is crazy and super atmospheric and just creepy as hell. So, yeah, Metroid 2 is just super nostalgic for me. It's one of the first games that I beat that I was just super proud of myself for. Uh, it was the first Game Boy game I ever beat. And I just I just love that game. To this day, I think Metroid 2 is a great, great game. Uh, I think people's only gripe is that it doesn't have a map, but who cares? It's actually a fairly linear game as far as the sections. Like, you're in one big section, and you explore that whole section, and then you kind of go on to the next one. That's kind of linear, but... Exploring the sections is, is uh, can be a little hard, but that's part of the reward, man. It's fun, fun stuff. Okay, so, second game that's really nostalgic to me, for sure, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with me on this. Um, this is just such a good game. Super Mario Kart. Um, okay, so a lot of people think, like, Mario Kart 64 is the best one. Uh, some people even like the GameCube one. I really like the GameCube Mario Kart. The original Mario Kart for me is my favorite. I love it. No, it's not the most graphically impressive, uh, though for the time it was graphically impressive. The music is so freaking good. I literally can't turn on Mario Kart and not hear that beginning theme for like a little while. Like I let it play for probably a minute or two, sometimes like five minutes I'll just let it sit there and play because it is just, <laughs> it brings me back to my childhood. Like, I'm going to well up with tears thinking about it. But, uh, yeah, I played Mario Kart at a friend's house in Pacifica. Uh, it was these brothers, a bunch of brothers. Like, there was, like, four of them. And they lived at the top of this hill, the same street I lived on in Pacifica, but at the top of the hill. And they always had the coolest games. Um, they also had shit games. I remember playing uh, Superman on Atari there, so it's not like they always had the greatest tasting games. But for the most part, as they grew older, they definitely got good taste in games and uh like final fantasy 2 i also played there and uh, the star wars games on nintendo or super nintendo and just a bunch of really good games but the one that really sticks out to me and just brings me back to that time is mario kart the music it just it's too much too much nostalgia for me too much i'm gonna break down and cry all right so 
uh, same town, Pacifica, California. We originally had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 arcade cabinet in there uh, in 7-Eleven, which was really freaking cool. I mean, that's one of the greatest arcade cabinets there is. And the only thing that can really, really top that, as far as beat-em-ups, has got to be Turtles in Time, Turtles 4. Um, in my opinion, the greatest beat-em-up that's ever lived, that ever was, that ever will be. Um, unless you start counting things like Muramasa, the Demon Blade, and, uh, what the hell is that other one? Uh, Dragon's Crown. I mean, those are, like, RPG beat-em-ups, so that it's, like, it's, like, perfect for my world. But for traditional beat-em-ups, I don't think anything beats Turtles 4. It is such a good game, and playing it in a 7-Eleven was just amazing. Uh, my early teenage years, and just being able to learn how to beat the crap out of people with other people that you didn't even know, you know what I mean? You'd be playing Turtles and some dude would walk up to you and say, hey, can I play? And, dude, yes, I'm being attacked by like 50 foot soldiers. Please hurry up and put your quarter in and help a brother out. So yeah, Turtles in Time was a great game to get people together and uh, was just a really fun time. It's funny because that 7-Eleven had a very small corner for their arcade cabinets. There was like three or four of them in a row and uh, it was kind of in the front of the store but in the like back corner the front back corner if that makes any sense at all but uh away from the register at the front and kind of tucked behind the aisle kids would steal shit all the time back there but um yeah so it was kind of hard to squeeze in there and get four players in there and then there's a bunch of people trying to watch and it, it was really cool it was kind of intense but uh yeah turtles in time i almost instead of this i almost said final fight because it's another beat em up that means a lot to me. Uh, I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club as a kid in San Francisco, California. Obviously, California. But anyways, uh, in San Francisco, I went to the Boys and Girls Club. My parents had me go there once in a while when I would, they would take me to work and stuff. And I'd go there and play arcade games. And they had a final fight cabinet. So that was actually a contender. But anyways, I digress. Uh, last two I got for you are RPGs. And they both have their own stories. Uh, first of all, when I was a kid, and I've talked about this so many times... This is probably the game I have put the most hours into. Most people say, like, oh, Skyrim. Or, like, Fallout. Yeah, like, yeah, I've put, like, fucking hours and hours into Fallout 4 or Fallout 3 or whatever or New Vegas. But, no, for me, I would play Dragon Warrior 4 and get, like, right to the end. And then, I don't know if I just didn't want it to end or what. But I would keep renting it. And as soon as I'd get to the end, I'd, like, I'd, like erase my game and start over and I never actually beat this until recently in the last couple of years and it's so good it's like you don't want it to end it's got this chapter system where you've got five different RPGs basically in one um, all the characters are really cool the last chapter combines all the characters from the previous four music's amazing graphically I freaking love the monsters I, I just love what Dragon Warrior brings to the table as far as traditional RPGs to what I grew up with and uh, I was an outside kid actually I was one of those kids that liked to go outside and play in the hills and ride bikes and do all that stuff but I did like video games and one of the few games that I would sit in my room and just sit in my room and play is Dragon Warrior 4 I mean there's it's just it's one of those games and to this day I was literally just thinking about Dragon Warrior 4 the other day I told myself after I beat it, like, oh, I'm not going to play this for a while, but, man, I want to again. It's so freaking good. It is the best RPG on Nintendo by far, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so last one. Another RPG and a great. Uh, this one is Memories from After I Moved to Oregon, Final Fantasy 3, or uh, 6, should be titled. Um, Final Fantasy 3, this game my friend Nick had, and he would, this is in North Bend, Oregon, and I used to go to his house and just watch him play games. He had, like, a PC and PC games, and nobody I knew was a PC gamer, so it was, like, a whole different world to me. But he was also into RPGs, and he always had, like, the best crap. Like, he always, he always had the best video games, and he had, like, the best stereo system, and he had a bunch of really cool CDs, and he had a badass computer for the time, and all these cool games, like the Legend of Kyrandia series, which nobody even talks about anymore, and like King's Quest and all that stuff, and stuff I had never seen before, but one day I remember coming over and seeing him play this, and he had the lights off in his room, and he had like Christmas lights in his room that he'd turn on, uh, just for like ambience, and it was just a really cool room the way he had it set up, and it's just like, just the white Christmas lights all the way around his room, in darkness, 
and he had the music blasting to this. He had this game on, and he had the volume turned way up because uh, his parents didn't give a shit. They just they bought him this giant stereo system. His neighbors would complain all the time. In fact, one time he was showing me the band Biohazard, and uh, our teacher came across the street and bitched him out and threatened to call the cops on him because he was blasting it so loud. Anyways, totally different story. But uh, yeah, so I walk in his room, and he's got Final Fantasy III playing, and it's blasting this amazing music that was like, geez, man, Final Fantasy II's music, or four is already just, like, mind-blowing. And then hearing this was just like, holy crap. And there's, like, the snow scene. And then so I watched him go through this game for, like, a month probably. And I'd come over, and we'd hang out, and then he'd go play this. And I was just fine with just sitting there and watching him play this game. I remember him going to Kefka's Tower and just so much coolness seeing the forest and like the train that you have to fight like i knew i needed this game and it actually took me probably another year uh, until i moved to medford uh, for a second time medford oregon i ended up getting my own super nintendo and with it came final fantasy 3 and link to the past which was amazing so those are my top five nostalgic games they all have their own individual stories and reasons that i love them uh, whether i was a kid or a teenager it's just something that struck a chord with me, and when I play them, it actually kind of brings me back to that time. Um, so yeah, but anyways, the thing is, is we are supposed to be tagging people. So I've got five people to tag, and uh, they're all really great channels. I'm going to leave links to the descriptions below. And uh, first of all, we've got Christopher Pico. That is actually his channel name, but he is known as the Old Ass Retro Gamer. Uh, great guy. I've done collabs with him. He does pickups. He does discussions, top tens. A lot of really good pickups. He's trying to go for, I think, a full Dreamcast collection, and uh, just a really nice guy. He does a lot, a lot of really cool collabs, so check out Old Ass Retro Gamer. And then I'm actually tagging kind of two people in this one because I'm tagging the Mega Retro Brothers. Uh, that would be Justin and Tim. These guys are amazing. Love their sense of humor. Love their loud pickup videos where Tim is just yelling death metal growls and drinking obnoxiously and showing his pickups. <laughs> and uh, it, it's really it's really a fun channel. I love the Mega Retro Brothers. Go check them out if you want to see just tons of pickups. Uh, but yeah, it'd be great if you guys could do a video. That'd be awesome. Your top five nostalgic games. Okay, and then we're going to tag uh, Daria from Daria Plays RPGs. Man, is it my imagination? Or was her channel just Daria Plays before? I swear the RPGs got added recently, but I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe I am. But either way, Daria Plays RPGs is actually a really good channel. She started after me, I believe, and she is like way past me in subscribers already. She is kicking ass because she talks about the greatest RPGs, and she's very eloquent and just speaks very well and knows her shit. So if you want to learn about RPGs, go to Daria Plays RPGs, and uh, it'd be great, Daria, if you could do a video. I'm sure you have some awesome RPGs to talk about that are nostalgic for you. And then, uh, I've never tagged this guy before. I really like this guy's channel, Water Music Retro. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, as far as I know, I'm pretty damn, like, 100% sure, like, 99% sure this guy does all the music for his channel, and it's really cool music. I really like it a lot. He's got a great personality, and uh, <laughs> one of my friends in our group recently discovered this guy and they were like holy crap it's your doppelganger and yes this guy does have a very similar style to me i'm like the chunky version of him or he's the skinny version of me either way check out water music retro if you like a lot of pickups also he's like moving right now and he's doing this like uh video series where he's just basically showing how he's moving and moving his collection and my music stopped Okay, so Water Music Retro, check out the channel. Hopefully he does a video, that'd be awesome. And the last one I have for you, also never tagged him before, but probably a lot of you guys know him. Fluffy Gamer from Southern California. That guy kicks ass, his channel kicks ass, and this guy is just pickups, pickups, pickups. I mean, this guy is all over Southern California, picking up all kinds of crap, and he's very entertaining, and he releases a ton of content. So if you want to see tons of of uh, pickups check out fluffy gamer link in the description below that'd be awesome if you can do a video as well all five of you that'd be great if you can do videos actually six because mega retro brothers i'd like tim and justin to maybe get their input that'd be really cool but that's all i have for you guys thank you very much for watching let me know in the comments below what are your top five nostalgic games and why that'd be really cool to read uh and if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe
thumbs up the video, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Game Grinder, for tagging me. Really appreciate it, Church. Keep rocking the retro games.